What's up guys, this is Altaric here and this is the Mac Mini M2. This is Apple's latest entry-level desktop computers that start at just 599 US dollars. There is also the Mac Mini M2 Pro with 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU and that one starts at $1300. But I want to talk about the cheapest Mac Mini M2 that you can get right now and this is the one. This is the basic M2 model that sells for $599 and for this price this little guy packs quite the punch. It is more than capable of handling most general computing tasks including intense video and photo editing tasks. It's actually pretty good at that. But the question here is how does it handle running Zwift and that's what I'll be talking about in this video. And in case you happen to press play on this video because this is a Mac mini video and you have no idea what Zwift is, let me explain. And also this is not my voice, I have been sick the past few days, actually been dealing with COVID and uh, this is what I got right now. So apologize for my voice. Okay, Zwift is a virtual cycling and running game that allows you to ride or run with other people in a digital world. It can be played on various devices such as smartphone, tablets, computers, Apple TV. The game features various virtual terrains, courses and challenges that you can explore while cycling indoor using a smart trainer or even running indoors. Uh, Zwift also offers a range of training programs and workout designed to improve your fitness level. You can connect with other cyclists, chat, race, or join virtual events and races. With that out of the way, let's talk about the Mac Mini. One thing I love about the Mac Mini is how simple and quiet it is. It has a fan, but you won't even notice it under normal use. Even when pushed hard during long Zwift sessions, the fan is barely audible. The Mac Mini is a sleek and compact device and has a solid selection of ports including Ethernet, HDMI 2.1, headphone, two USB-A ports and either two or four Thunderbolt 4 ports depending on the version you have. The Thunderbolts are great for fast data transfer but you can use them to charge external devices or in my case an external display. It supports multiple display options with one display with up to 6K resolution at 60Hz over Thunderbolt and one display with up to 5K resolution at 60Hz over Thunderbolt or 4K resolution at 60Hz over HDMI. Zwift recently made changes for Apple devices. Over the past few months, Zwift has been working on phasing in metal support, which is a low-level graphic API across all Apple platforms. This means that all iOS, tvOS, and macOS devices that are officially supported are now running on Metal instead of OpenGPL. Essentially, Metal allows developer to directly access a graphic processing unit, or as we call it, the GPU, to really maximize performance and efficiency for graphic heavy tasks. So thanks to Metal, you should notice a smoother and more efficient experience using when using Zwift on your Apple devices. Now, let me break down how graphics and game performance work in Zwift. There are two main factors that determine how good your game will look and run. The first one is a graphic resolution, which you can adjust in the Zwift setting menu. This controls the number of pixels on the screen and determines how clear and detailed the images will be. Zwift offers low, medium, high, ultra and 4K resolution. For the Mac Mini M2, the maximum resolution Zwift assigned to it as of today is 1080p, which is full high definition, so two levels down the highest resolution you can get in Zwift. So sadly, the Mac Mini M2 only gets up to 1080p profile. The second factor that affects the game performance is the graphic profile, which determines the level of realism and detail you will see in the game, such as shadows, sun rays, water reflections, wildlife, etc. Zwift automatically sets this based on your device graphic processing power. This cannot be manually adjusted in the game. There are some hacks to go around this, but this is another topic for another video. But Zwift doesn't give you the option within the game itself to change it. You can tell which profile is assigned to your device by analyzing your log file, which you can find in the Zwift folder and the Zwiftalyzer website. For devices with integrated GPUs like the Apple TV and other iOS devices, the graphic profile is usually set to basic or medium profile. So 
I ran some tests on the Mac Mini M2 and analyzed the log file using the Zwiftalyzer tool and I was sort of disappointed with the results. So let's take a look. The Mac Mini M2 is assigned a medium level graphic profile which is not what I was hoping for. It is worth noting that when the M1 chip, the M1 chip was first released, Zwift assigned it a high graphic profile with ultra resolution and I did a whole video on that. So I was hoping for something similar or even better for the M2. Unfortunately, that's not the case, at least not right now. But despite the medium profile Zwift assigned the M2, you will see some elements and details such as rider shadow, which is generally reserved for higher profiles. So I did some comparison between the Mac mini and my gaming PC. So let's take a closer look and compare what you see on the Mac mini M2 to a PC running Zwift in Ultra 4K. side by side comparison between my gaming PC running Zwift in 4K with ultra profile this is the best graphic profile that you can get on Zwift and my Mac mini M2 as you take a closer look you might notice that at first glance the two might look very similar to you but trust me when comparing the two using a bigger screen the difference is obvious so let's examine this more closely like I mentioned earlier the Mac Mini M2 gets Rider Shadow, which is a nice detail to have. But if we stop here and take a closer look, you can see the 4K gets deeper color highlights as you see here on the bridge as an example. Another detail you won't find on the Mac Mini is headlights, which give a lot more dimension to the road ahead of you. But let's move on to Utopia and take a closer look there. This is on the TikTok route and one of the things that you will notice is the lack of grass on the Mac Mini and wildlife in general. If you look at the background here for example, you will see fewer cactuses in the background. Highlights on the rock formation are much more detailed in 4K versus the Mac Mini. I know these might seem like little details but you add them all together and it becomes noticeable. But the biggest issue for me that I notice is the lack of pixel density. If we zoom into the riders here, you can clearly see more pixelation on the Mac mini versus PC. Perhaps this won't be as noticeable on smaller screens but it was certainly apparent to me. Zwift had assigned an ultra resolution to the M2 and M2 Pro earlier when they first came out resulting in a much crisper image. However, recently they changed it to 1080p and I noticed a big decline in picture quality. So it seems to me that Zwift is experimenting with different configurations at the moment and they might eventually increase the profile to a much higher resolution in the future. Now let's talk about frame rate on Zwift. I checked my Zwift log using the Zwiftalyzer tool and it seems that Zwift has the frame rate locked at consistent 60 frames per second which is really solid. This means that the game is running smoothly without any noticeable lag or stuttering. So you'll be happy with how smooth the game looks. Alright so here's the bottom line. If you are looking for a cost effective way to run Zwift on a PC the Mac Mini M2 is definitely worth considering. It is one of the more powerful and adaptable options out there, plus it is more than enough for most general computing tasks. Now, as for Zwift itself, it seemed like they are experimenting with different configurations as they roll out updated rendering code and deliver a native silicon binary. But as of right now, Zwift assigned a medium graphic profile to the Mac Mini M2 and also capped the frame rate at 60 frames per second. But honestly, I believe the Mac Mini is capable of running Zwift in a higher profile, maybe even an ultra profile. And I hope that Zwift brings back the ultra resolution option back to the M2. I think they will. Anyway, that's my take on the Mac Mini M2 and Zwift. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. Do not forget to help support the channel and hit that little like button. And if you are still watching and haven't subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video and happy Zwifting.